So um, to do a problem, to do this problem, ladies and gentlemen, first thing, they're asking us to find the cosine of theta over 2 for this triangle. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we know the formula, which again will be provided to you. Um, but the formula for this is going to be the square root of 1 plus cosine of theta divided by 2. And there's one a couple things I want to mention to you guys when, remember, I was going through the plus or the minus. Um, that's actually going to depend on where our angle is actually in. And I forgot to add that to you guys. I forgot to add this to our notes last class period. Um, but since this is going to be everything is in positive, then this is going to be the positive square root. Okay? And I'll explain once we get into a, an example like this where it would be negative. Um, but anyways, so now I need to evaluate the cosine of theta. So to evaluate cosine of theta divided by 2, I need to know what cosine of theta is, which would be adjacent over hypotenuse. Right? But the problem is we don't know what the hypotenuse is, so we need to use Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully, you guys should know your Pythagorean, I, Pythagorean triple, and you can determine that it is what? 17. 17. But in case you're like, how did you know that? You can always set up the Pythagorean theorem. Or, yeah, Pythagorean. So therefore, you'd have 8 squared equals 225 plus 64. 8 squared equals 289. Square root, square root. H equals um, 17. All right, but it's a Pythagorean triple, ladies and gentlemen. So Get used to the common ones that we've used in this class. Um, this one, 8, 15, and 17. Uh, we also did 13, 5, and 12, and 3, 4, and 5. Very common Pythagorean triples you'll see. So now we can see that this is going to be 17. right? So now to evaluate this, I'm just going to plug in what is the value of cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is now adjacent over hypotenuse. So I have the square root of 1 plus 15 over 17 divided by 2. All right? Now, in my case, I don't want to deal with fractions. Okay? So what I'm going to do is, since I have 17 in the denominator here, I'm going to multiply 17 over 17. Right? And it's OK. As long as I multiply on the top and the bottom, I'm not changing it. Right? I'm just creating an equivalent fraction. Right? As long as you multiply the same fraction on the top and bottom, you're not changing the fraction. You're just making it equivalent. So when I do that by applying distributive property up top, I now have the square root of 17 plus 15 over 34. Okay. And now I can obviously add this, which is going to be 32. Correct? So I'm going to work this back over here. So now I have 32 over 34. Well, I can at least reduce that to 16 over 17. Right? By dividing 2 on the top. Because if you guys think about that, I just, I just realized this. You guys are OK with doing this, right? You guys understand that's the same fraction, right? So you guys understand, if here, what did I do? What operation did I do to go from here to here? Yeah, but what did I do? The what operation? Add, subtract, multiply, divide? I divided by what? Two on the top and bottom, right? You guys understand. That's OK. So you guys should hopefully understand that I can multiply then too, right? It's not changing the answer. If you're OK to divide by two on, on the top and bottom, you can multiply by 17 on the top and bottom. You're just producing an equivalent equation, OK? So now I have 16 over 17. Now I'm going to break it up into the square root of 16 over the square root of 17. Well, so now I can take the square root of 17, or 16, which is 4 over the square root of 17. Rationalize the now I have a square root on the bottom. So now I rationalize the denominator. And my final answer is 4 square root of 17 over 17. Any questions? Yes. 